Installing a cop kit is vital to your pump's performance, and depending on your application and operating conditions, it is recommended that you install a cop kit every 6 to 12 months. Cop kit stands for Keep On Pumping. Each pump has a specific cop kit number, so let's take a look at where you can find your pump's cop kit information. On top of the pump, you will find the pump's information label. Look for the cop kit number listed in the box next to where it says cop kit number. Make sure to verify that the cop kit you are installing matches the cop kit number listed on the pump. First, we will need to depressurize your pump. To do so, you will need to make sure that the relief tubing is connected to your bleed valve or five function valve if your pump is equipped with one and routed back to your solution tank. Now, turn the bleed knob counterclockwise until the pressure and liquid has drained back into your solution tank. Next, we will need to flush out the head of the pump using water or a neutralizing solution. If a shutoff valve or corporation stop and nozzle has been installed downstream of the injection valve, it should be shut off. Remove the discharge tubing and place in separate container for flushing liquid. Place the foot valve into the container of water and turn the pump on to flush out the head assembly. Once the head assembly has been flushed, lift the foot valve out of the water and continue to pump with air until the pump head is purged of all water. Wash or wipe down the outside of the pump as well if chemical has dripped onto the pump. While the pump is running, set the stroke length to zero by turning the stroke knob counterclockwise to the zero position and then unplug the pump. Now that the pump has been flushed, we can begin disassembly. Remove the four pump head screws and then remove the pump head assembly. Now we can remove the diaphragm by carefully grasping the outer edge and turning it counterclockwise to loosen and remove. Make sure you keep the deflection plate and shims which are behind the diaphragm. There could be up to two shims installed on your pump or for some pump models, no shims at all. Remove the new diaphragm, making sure not to scratch the surface. Apply a thin film of grease to the areas of the diaphragm that contacts the deflection plate. Slide the diaphragm deflection plate onto the back of the diaphragm stud. Make sure that the radius side is towards the diaphragm. If your pump had shims installed, place those on the stud as well and screw the assembly onto the EPM or electronic pulsating module unit. Turn the diaphragm clockwise until the deflection plate and shims are tied against the solenoid shaft and the diaphragm stops turning. If there is a gap between the adapter and diaphragm, Repeat the procedure removing one shim at a time until the diaphragm just touches the adapter or is just slightly recessed. With the pump running, adjust the stroke length to 50% and then unplug the pump. Once the diaphragm is properly positioned, we can prep the head assembly for installation. The cop kit contains all the parts necessary to replace the entire head assembly. Depending on your pump's cop kit, it may or may not come assembled. If assembly is required, attach the suction and discharge valves to the pump head with the flow arrows in the correct direction. Install the pump head to the pump with the flow arrows pointing in the direction of flow and tighten the four new head screws. Make sure to tighten the head screws in a crisscross pattern and only tighten the screws snugly. Verify that the head is not over tightened to one side by looking at the space on either side of the head and ensure that you have equal space between the head and the adapter. After a few days of pump operation, make sure to go back and recheck the head screws and retighten them if necessary. Reinstall the suction tubing and foot valve and test the pump with water. Adjust your stroke length to 100% for easier priming. You have now successfully installed a cop kit on your pulsifeeder chemical feed pump.